Hi, I'm Sarah Merrick, founder and CEO of Ripple Energy. Now you might have heard that climate change and UK climate change targets have been in the news quite a lot recently. So I'm gonna talk you through what the targets are, how they've changed and what the drivers are. And also importantly, what they mean for you as a Ripple customer. So the first thing that it's important to remember is that um, the UK next year in November is gonna host the Conference of the Parties, that's the COP. So this is when all the world comes together and decides what climate action they're gonna take. And recent memorable ones have been Paris, Copenhagen, and the first one was in Rio. So the UK is the chair of the talks. Um, and so it's really important that the UK shows leadership. And that's partly why there's been so many recent announcements um, in the last couple of months, because by showing leadership and by putting ourselves out there and saying what we're going to do, we hope that other countries um, will come along too and say what they're going to do. And generally, everyone's ambition increases um, the more that some people put themselves out there and say they're going to up their targets. So the first thing that was announced was um, the UK's 10 point plan for a green industrial revolution. And this covered loads of different things from nuclear and hydro, carbon capture and storage. Uh, it also announced that the UK wanted to install 40 gigawatts of onshore wind by 2030. So that's almost a quadrupling um, of the offshore wind capacity, there's just over uh, 10 gigawatts at the moment. Um, and another thing that got um, the headlines was that the UK is going to ban the sale of new petrol and diesel cars in 2030 and ban the sale of new hybrids from 2035. So really big, important stuff that's going to make a big impact on our emissions. Um, and a couple of weeks after that, the UK then announced that it was going to increase its um, nationally determined contribution. Um, and this is part of the Paris Climate Agreement. Everyone goes away, all the countries agree to say, OK, we'll reduce our emissions by 50 percent or we'll reduce our emissions by 30 percent. Um, and then all those targets are then put together and the, um, the world sees, OK, will this get us to where we want to be, um, which is a um, global warming of no more than 1.5 degrees um, centigrade. So. The UK initially had a target of 57% reductions against the its 1990 level, which is the, the, the baseline for everyone's emissions reductions. So previously it was a 57% reduction by 2030 and the UK um, announced it was increasing its target to 68%, um, which is, it might not seem like a, a, a very large amount, but actually given that we're already at 44%, the extra bit that needs to happen between now and 2030, um, instead of being 13% additional reduction, it's 24% um, additional reductions um, on against our 1990 level. So that's a really big increase, actually. And then a few weeks after that, um, the UK announced, uh, published an energy white paper. And this is sort of the how, of how we're gonna meet um, these targets. So you set the high level targets, um, and then obviously you need policies to actually deliver those targets. Um, so the Energy White Paper set out um, some really important things. The key takeaway I think from it is that you can't just change one thing, you need to change the whole system. So it has to be a really sort of holistic change. Um, and so it included everything from obviously putting in place things like the um, offshore wind target, um, huge increase um, in heat pumps. So the, another big takeaway is that we need to electrify as much as we possibly can. And one big thing that we need to electrify is heating. So instead of um, everyone having a, a gas boiler in their home, increasingly people will have um, electric heating systems. So that's things like heat pumps and um, potentially heat batteries as well, potentially even hydrogen in places where they, they have hydrogen um, networks. Um, but yeah, heat pumps will be a huge part um, of our UK's heating systems. They're pretty rare at the moment, but in future they'll become as standard as um, as, as, as gas boilers, basically. Um, so yeah, big um, moves for electrifying everything, primarily heat as well, but also making sure that that electricity that is electrifying everything, that's powering our um, homes, powering our heating systems and our cars, is clean electricity. So there's new nuclear stations as well, obviously all the offshore wind as well and increases in renewables. Um, but also as part of the big push for um, uh, greater use of electricity, so very, very roughly, people's electricity consumption could double um, in the next decade or so. So as electricity becomes more and more important, it's important that we can get more um, sort of sophisticated energy tariffs. So at the moment, you might have heard about Octopus Agile, which is where you get a different price every half hour according to what the market price of electricity is. Those sorts of tariffs are likely to become a lot more um, 
commonplace with far more time with used tariffs because this means that the system can balance a lot more easily. So yeah, in terms of big headlines, big increase in the UK's um, ambitions in terms of its climate reduction. So 68% reduction against 1990 levels, which is massive. Um, getting um, clean electricity, so cleaning up the UK's electricity system um, by 2030, electrifying as much as we possibly can, um, and moving away from gas heating to electric forms of heating, primarily heat pumps, and electric cars, um, to moving away from petrol and diesel to electric cars. So a lot of electricity. And so then what does this mean for you as a Ripple customer? So it means that you are likely to increase, your electricity consumption is likely to increase. Um, and if you want to um, have your emissions, your carbon footprint to, to be reduced, you need that electricity to be coming from a clean source. Obviously, the obvious source would be to have it coming from your um, from your wind farm. So we think all these changes make it really they're fantastic for Ripple because it means that we're going to have more customers with more consumption um, and those customers will be wanting to have um, their electricity coming from, from green sources. Okay, if you've got any questions, please just email us at info at rippleenergy.com. Thank you.